Welcome to episode 168 of Marketing Without the Marketing. Very happy you can join me. I'm in the middle of this series that is Social Strategy 201, part of a larger 16, 17, 18 part series, I don't know, uh, about Content Marketing 201, just because, well, look, these things are not working anymore. And in the Social Strategy 201, we talked about sort of a broad overview about why that is the case, uh, then went into, uh, in the episode that's listening, asking, interacting, talking about just sort of using social differently. And then the last episode, the most recent one in this series on measurement and iteration so that we're getting data and actually using it to make adjustments. But today I want to question a core concept of social strategy, which is the concept of getting a following. Now, this seems to be the goal of social, and we certainly see hundreds of examples where this works for brands and celebrities and social influencers. But I want to question that today. And if you'll go with me on this, let's just examine this and what we can do about this. Because when I think of this, I think, well, look, what does a following get you anyway, right? more eyeballs, uh, more attention on its own, who cares, right? Eyeballs are inefficient. Their awareness, and of course, as I say over and over again, uh, awareness is the first step in a customer's journey. There's, you know, they're not going to go any further without a first step. But that awareness is worth so very little in the scheme of things. And Without a pathway set up, it's all but worthless. And today's web makes sure of that. It's working against us as humans who want to connect with humans. And as I've been saying throughout this whole series, social media is not what it used to be. For the platforms, they gave into the advertising imperative that forced consolidation of these platforms. We haven't seen a lot of new innovation. Uh, And for us using it, this sort of bait and switch had a significant impact, right? We we used to be able to just set up an account, start posting, start getting interactions. People are clicking through to our website. Those days are long gone. Now, I say bait and switch because all these platforms promised one thing to gain wide usage so that we'd all use it, right? And then they changed the rules midstream. So now what we see is organic reach is way, way down, and we're just on social so they can serve ads to us, just like any modern media, which is so disappointing when you think of what the potential was here. Now, a Facebook page is still a necessary place on the web for you and your brand, but let's face it, it's as passe as Facebook itself. And this is not the horse that you want to bet on. Same thing with Facebook Live. Uh, with Instagram, and even with the other Facebook properties too, like Messenger, uh, WhatsApp. I mean, Facebook is a flagging property, so they're going to have to monetize every last piece of it because, well, you know, there's the requirement of unlimited growth when you're a publicly traded company and you're worth billions of dollars. And guess what? This is unsustainable. Now, the algorithm wants us to connect with content that holds us captive, right, so they can serve adds to us. Um, That's the reality of these platforms. But what I care about is what do we do with that as small business owners? So here's where I see this going. If any of these platforms hope to remain relevant at all, they're going to have to have smaller conversations remain free, right? Like you're not going to We may pay for something like Facebook or Twitter or Snapchat or whatever in the future, but they're going to have to have this remain free. Otherwise, why are we going to be on there, right? So this comes down to me to two things, which is groups and messaging. So groups being things like Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups, uh, if we're going to apply this to our strategy. Uh, And almost all these platforms have direct messaging. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter direct messaging, even though that's just a horrible experience right now on Twitter. Uh, Snapchat, TikTok, Pinterest, even Pinterest has direct messaging feature on it too. And they have to keep us being able to connect with one another. So let's use that and let's build elsewhere. And counterintuitively, let's build small, at least to start. 
right? I'm not saying that ultimately you don't want to grow this into something that's large uh, and sustainable. Uh, we want to do that, but at least to start, let's think about going small and let's steer into what used to be the best part of social, the real connections. All right, this is a three-point strategy. Let's go through each of the three here. Number one, pick a platform. Depends where your audience is, but let's say it's a Facebook group. Facebook groups are still 100% organic reach. You post there, everyone has the opportunity to see it, unlike a page which has somewhere in the 3 to 4% organic reach. Um, it's still a great strategy. Uh, LinkedIn group is similar. Like you see a lot of folks running groups where you, you know, get a bunch of people in the, in the room who care about the same thing who, or who are trying to solve the same problem or issue. Awesome. But in this strategy, any software that has a group feature would work, right? So think, I mean, really Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, even Mac messaging on iPhone, on iOS, right? Or HipChat, or look, you could even use Slack, uh, or Zoom. And I know these things are meant for sort of business connections, but why not use it uh, to assemble your small group? Now, I really like using Slack for this, and I see a lot of other people doing this as well. Uh, the best example of this, I think, for post-sale support is Paul Jarvis uh, with his Chimp Essentials course, uh, a great community where people are are able to ask questions of one another, share strategies. I mean, this works really, really great. Uh, and, you know, he started from a very, very small uh, thing to, to something that appears to have, uh, you know, well over a thousand people, I, I think, my impression of it is, uh, is, is that it's that large. Now, look, there are pros and cons to each of these different platforms. I, you know, won't get into to all of that. Uh, I could devote other episodes to that. But look, the, the, the message here is just pick the one that's natural to you and where your people are, right? And then go from there. Number two, keep it small to start. So when you start your group, your Facebook group, your LinkedIn group, whatever, the first wave is hand-picked Invite only, no one else. This might be, I mean, literally two or three additional people besides you. Six people, ten people, whatever it is where it is handpicked. You are bringing a bunch of people together, again, who care about the same thing. Let's get everyone in a virtual space and start the discussions. Then once you do that, you get a conversation started, you seed it with questions, uh, then you do everything that you can to make these conversations essential. This is hard because you can't control that, but you can influence it, right? So bringing good questions uh, into the group, uh, sharing useful links, curating things for, for people, uh, helping them uh, solve a particular issue. All these are ways to make this where someone has to keep coming back because this thing is so good. They make it a part of their every day. And again, this is hard, but if you can do this, think of how valuable those connections are. And then number three, scale it slowly. And here's how I'd recommend doing that. Once it's established and people see the clear benefit of this group that you've set up, then allow people to nominate another person for the group or two others. Just set up a rubric, whatever that is. Just say, hey, we're getting a lot out of this. Let's extend it now. Everyone is allowed to nominate one or two other people. Uh, still, you're going to approve uh, these folks uh, who are coming into the group. And all of a sudden now, you know, the, the group size has doubled and or tripled in this first wave. And then you see how it goes, right? That's going to change the group dynamics. Make sure everyone of that core group is on board with doing this so that they welcome people into the group. And then you iterate, right? You go stage by stage and make a real decision at each point in uh, in the process as to whether or not it gets too big to be manageable, right? You want to keep this contained so that, again, you know, those relationships are super strong uh, and, and people are cementing bonds in this group. Uh, because if you've done that, the value goes up a lot. And here's the most amazing thing about this strategy when it works. You are bringing people together. You're creating connections. And if any of these relationships between people in the group become truly fruitful, 
you will be credited for it. You are the one who brought people together. And there's really nothing as worthwhile that I can think of in the digital space uh, or, or in real world. And again, yes, it's incredibly difficult to do, but those are exactly the things that make it the most valuable. All right, I'm going to stop there because I wanted to keep this to strategy and not specific how to's, but let me know what you think. Have you used any of these platforms before a groups strategy or a group message or Slack that was outside of sort of a workplace application? Have you tried any of these and ditched them because they didn't work? I would love to hear this. So in the interest of going to where your people are, hit me up where I spend my time. That's on Twitter, at Mbozy, LinkedIn, at Mbozy, or lately I've been doing a lot more with Patreon, also at Mbozy, or of course in the comments section in the show notes to this episode. And speaking of Patreon, if you've been enjoying this podcast, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I've got a private feed for supporters uh, with extra exclusive episodes and videos and lessons from my online courses. And the link is patreon.com slash mbosey. Or book a session with me at controlmousemedia.com slash strategy. And we can look at applying a small group strategy to what you do. It'd be fun. All right. Thank you again for listening. In the next episode in the series, I'm going to get into Facebook ads. You know, if we just want to give in and steer into that strategy of doing ads and boosting posts and all that, uh, there is a way to do it right. And uh, I'll go over that with you in the next episode. All right. Thank you. And we'll see you then.